Hey guys, this is a video that we're actually doing in response to another content creator's video. This is in response to the nitpicking nerds video that they recently did about best ramp. Hey, we're gonna uh, discuss what they discussed essentially, and we're gonna discuss the best actual ramp. But just before we get any further into the video, if you're enjoying the content here, you can join the Screw Army by subscribing and turning on the notifications. It keeps the squirrels from eating your nuts. But with that, let's get back into the content. All right, so I'm not gonna disagree with these guys at all. They have a lot of good knowledge about the format. I'm just saying, that they missed out quite a lot in their discussion. And hey, their video was like 20 seconds long or whatever it was. Hey, we're going to have a bit longer of a discussion here. Uh, just a bit, at least. <laughs> We've already gone over that long. But hey, there we go. It is what it is. But honestly, you know, like I don't even play the best ramp in the format. You know, like I don't. I don't play Soul Ring for one. <laughs> Because I just like, oh, dude, that's too busted for me. I don't really care that much if other people play it. I only care if, like, it, that people have it on, like, turn one or two or whatever. Then it's like, quick, they're the threat. Quick, they've got Sora and get them, get them, get them, <laughs> you know, type thing. Um, you know, but that is one of the best ramp spells in the format. And that's basically where the best ramp spells are, legitimately. Like, they're one to zero mana those are legit the best ramp spells in the format the one to two mana stroke zero mana ones really are the best ones like when you're looking at a deck list um uh for cdh and whatnot you will see a lot more of the zero mana uh, mana rocks and the one mana mana rocks. These are the best mana rocks in the format. These are the best ramp spells in the format because, again, <laughs> they net neutral or net positive at minimum on what they're going to give you. And yes, certain cards like Mana Vault don't untap or whatnot, but that's not really the point. The real point here, here is to just get as much mana as quickly as you can and play the biggest, baddest things that you can or play the biggest combo that you can as quickly as possible. Um, so Chrome Mox, that's one of the best mana rocks out there. You know, Jeweled Lotus, you know, I don't love it, but again, it like, you, like in that format and in this like zone of we are actually playing the best mana rocks, Getting your commander out, especially if it's a one-color commander or perhaps a two-color commander, on turn one or turn two uh, is very powerful. Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, uh, Mana Vault, as I said, Mox Diamond, Mox Opal, um, you know, Arcane Signet, Soul Ring, like I said already, you know, these are the best, you know, early game Mana Rocks. Um, in in those formats. Now there are a few others. Uh, Mox Amber, Chrome Mox, Mox Diamond, etc. Uh, then you get into like the two mana man rocks like Mind Stone, Thought Vessel, Prismatic Lens, things like this. Um, those are a huge step down from a lot of these zero mana uh, mana rocks and things like this. You get to the signets and things like that, like Orzhov signet, Rector signet, is it signet? Um, you get to the talismans and things like that. So, you know, talisman of indulgence, talisman of hierarchy, etc. Um, you get to these ones, but again. Like, those are the cards that you look at. And yes, like, Nature's Law, Three Visits, Sakura Tribe Elder, Elvish Mystic, etc. All of that sort of stuff in green. But when you're actually talking about the best uh, ramp, you're often talking about the, you know, 
zero stroke one mana uh mana rocks grim monolith uh you know and basalt monolith may not be actually that amazingly good but they're easily enabled by basically going infinite in different ways um so they are actually really good because hey you can easily break them um, and easily make them you know very 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 powerful and again make infinite mana so hey that has um basically been my little discussion here to say hey you know you know that the the there are a lot of things out there and again like i say you don't have to pay, play the best things i don't play the best things if you want to play the most powerful decks then you have to play the best things you have to look at the things that you know those decks use and utilize because you know like again if you don't really know a whole lot about seed edh and i definitely really don't i know the fringes of it but if you don't really know what kind of is that format um you are better to be trusting somebody else's list or somebody else's build path of of a list of a deck because instead of like going well i just don't have this or i just don't have that doesn't really fly with that format and it doesn't really work with that format in in any sense like you can proxy things and but be like well i have budget stuff and whatnot to a degree that's why like monocolor some certain monocolor things having the right certain pieces can be really powerful like cranko can even be really powerful if it's built right uh, and things like that, like if you've got all the right mana rocks and things like that, you can get a, you know, very powerful deck. Um, so it's still one of those things. But anyway, it's it's one of those things where the best mana rocks and the best ramp uh, are all known right now, really. And again, that's not going to change unless they really reprint, they print something super powerful. And they've just said that, you know, we're not going to print anything like that anymore um, because it's too good. Like, <laughs> and like they said, even said like Arcane Signet was like a mistake and things like that. Um, so, yeah, but again, you know, it is what it is. And hey, you know, we all have different ways we all want to play this game. And again, like peak performance isn't the only performance that is actually peak performance in my opinion at least like again like i'm not just going to play elvish mystic and some of these other cards because well <laughs> uh like especially in decks that need lands i would much rather have cards that are bit less efficient perhaps but are much more useful in other ways and add more synergy to the deck overall that i'm actually building rather than being well this is just a super efficient card that doesn't really do me anything um even if it's a slightly less efficient card sometimes in the deck that i'm building because hey well you know maybe it, it it will have some more synergy with what i have and just getting me land ramp for the most part is much safer anyway or much better anyway than than getting just a random mana dork and unless i'm getting some of those other benefits like out of it then it's not really worth my time but that's just the way that i look at it and like one thing that i will say about perhaps cards that are like savala or cards that are like that because savala is one of those cards that it does a whole lot of work but there are a lot of cards that are kind of like that that some people will say well i don't want to have a creature or anything that i have to untap to get the benefit out of it for the most part i don't a hundred percent agree with that but i get the point um of what they're saying if it if it doesn't get immediate value it is tough to sometimes like make that 
like investment of saying, well, I'm just going to cast this and it's not really, you know, like going to do a whole lot and I have to hope to untap to get any kind of value out of it. So those cards I tend to avoid myself because I do find that I find that very awkward and I find that very like, uh, I don't just want to make that commitment with cards that are stuck, uh, that are over three mana, but they are such good cards that uh, I do feel like, uh, maybe I'm missing out on something here to a degree. But again, it's just so tough to, to know where and where and how and what and all this sort of stuff. You can, you can make that argument for certain things and perhaps you can make that argument if you say, well, I've just got a whole bunch of mana anyway, so I don't even need to tap Savala for mana. All I need her for is the fact that it says, whenever I play a creature, I draw a card. So that could be just like, well, I have Beast Whisperer, sort of, but I also have this thing that could be a mana door. So in that way, it is also a bit more... Like, well, I can take advantage of playing it first, then playing something else if I have the mana to. So I don't know, but that's one of those things that I would, you know, look to be like, uh, sometimes because, hey, unless I really have that output of I can really chain together a whole bunch of things, it's one of those cards that I probably would cut. And again, I'm not one to play many of them, <laughs> like cheaper mana dorks because they're, even though they can sort of can trip later, they're not a whole lot of relevant later. So I would rather just have something that drew me three or four cards or whatever um, or whatnot or something a bit more impactful or whatnot. So, But that's just me uh, and whatnot because, hey, well, I don't run Skull Clamp again sort of thing. So that's kind of one of those things that, if you're running Skull Clamp, they're a whole lot more relevant, but it does depend on what you're building and, again, what you're doing. If you're in a reanimator deck or whatnot, maybe they might be more useful. Um, sometimes they are, sometimes they are. But, again, like I would just say Sakura Tribe Elder is like probably a whole lot better anyway, even if you put Skull Clamp on it as well because you can sack it to in response, I think, and it dies anyway and whatnot. So... It still sees the dies trigger, and you get to draw two cards and ramp, so that's really good, I think. I think that's how it should work anyway. So, But anyway, that has been my discussion here. <laughs> I've gone a bit longer than what I actually want to do, but whatever. Hopefully this has been somewhat informative. Um, you guys have liked it. hope you guys have uh, and whatnot. Tell me if you guys want to see me do more stuff that's quote unquote in response to other creators content i don't really like to do that per se for the most part i want to do my own stuff and if i kind of happen on the same sort of ideas as certain other creators i do tend to say hey look these guys had the same idea as what i had or whatever uh, because hey there's only so much to sort of talk about in this format to to some degrees and sometimes because hey it is what it is but that is what it is hey <laughs> that's the way it is but hey guys as i say you guys can let me know what you guys think write your thoughts down there in the comments below whatever you want to tell me uh keep it civil though youtube deletes those uncivil comments uh but yeah if i don't see you down there in those comments i'll see you in the next one